David and Mary, we shall remain standing as we sing together the prayer hymn, which you will find in the hymn books in the racks on page 484. It is entitled, O Perfect Love, and is a prayer which each of us who have been gathered together by our special relationship of affection for these two young people are able in this hymn of prayer to join in prayer and in praise for them at this enormously lovely hour. Let us sing together in prayer. We who are the friends and the loved ones of David and Mary are assembled here in the presence of God to join them in holy marriage. That is, marriage which was designed by God in Eden and confirmed by the gracious presence and the miraculous blessing of Christ at Cana of Galilee. Regulated by the commandments and and so is to be held in honor among all men. Mary we 
we who are the friends and the loved ones of David and Mary are assembled here in the presence of God to join them in holy marriage. That is, marriage which was designed by God in Eden and confirmed by the gracious presence and the miraculous blessing of Christ at Cana of Galilee. Marriage which is to be regulated by the commandments and more especially by the Spirit of Christ. And so is to be held in honor among all men. Marriage thus, for which our Lord has declared that a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife. And so the purpose of this marriage is to unite your hearts and your lives, blending all of your interests and sympathies, all of your hopes and your dreams. I remind you, it involves mutual compromise loving sufferance and a holy trust. In joining any couple in holy marriage, the real uniting and marrying is done by the man and woman in joint covenant between themselves and God, the church adding its blessing as the ministers officiate in the service. It is a very great privilege, David and Mary, for you to engage in this joyous relationship, a privilege, not a right, since love is a gift and never can be earned or fully deserved, only joyously accepted and responded to. So it is a great privilege for you thus to be able to share your lives together, upholding each other in your love and in your work, being one increasingly in feeling and in purpose, and so dividing the sorrows and doubling the joys. For nothing can take the place of loving and of being loved. The Apostle Paul writes, If I speak in the tongues of men and angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And if I give away all I have and deliver my body to be burned and have not love, I gain nothing. Without love, whatever we do is nothing. The Spirit through the Paul does not say that it isn't much. He says it's nothing we love or we perish. And we know how we learn to love. It comes only by first being loved. The only way a child learns to love is by being surrounded with love. As each of you has been so marvelously surrounded throughout your childhood and all the way to this wonderful young adulthood that you share. But if a child does not know he is loved, he grows up hurt and lonely, empty because he has turned in upon himself instead of out to others. Angry he is often, rebellious surely. He learns how to be loving only if he knows he is loved. And so a man increasingly learns to love a woman as he is loved by a woman. And a woman learns to love increasingly a man as she is loved by a man. Love, you see, is a oneness 
a hoping, an emptiness filled. Love is to be lived, for loving is living. Strong fiber to clasp, strong faith to lay hold upon, strong energy to be expressed. A boy and a girl become a man and a woman. Love is to be shared in creative living. Love believes, trusts, and hopes. Love is an eagerness, an earnestness, not given to destructive jealousy, not given to smothering possessiveness, not given to the anger of accusation. Love is a beginning of purpose, a quieting of restlessness an establishing of confidence. Love is delicate as a flower and withers under indifference. Love is sensitive as a baby and shrinks under harshness. Love is eager as a child and dies under cruelty. Love develops with tenderness. It searches for companionship and it blossoms with attention. It desires closeness and expands with sharing. Love may wither, but it grows again. Love may shrink, but it expands again. And love may die, but it lives again. Love is active, never fully satisfied. It searches, it finds, it explores, it possesses, it gives. Love is the flowing river that carries ships to the sea. Love is the sunshine and rain that gives life to the soil. Love is seed time and the harvest that gives food to the hungry. Love is the prayer, waiting, that gives hope to the boy, the girl, the man, the woman. Love is joy and laughter, faith and creativity. Love sees and understands, it believes, sustains, gives courage and energy and patience. Love is life. Without love we are nothing. With love we are more than the sum total of all our being. We are persons, creators and co-creators through love. For love is life and living. And what if we are never loved? And what if loving our own dear ones, we love imperfectly or partially, not wholly? Where shall we turn? Where shall you turn for renewal? Where shall we find the perfect loving? Where does it begin? Where do we find the source and the spring of love. We love, says John the Apostle, because God first loved us. So I charge you, David, and you, Mary, and I entreat you to, as you enter into and sustain this sacred and holy union, that you do seek the favor and the blessing of God who comes to us in Jesus Christ our Lord. For his blessing makes us rich and adds no sorrow. Let us pray. Almighty and ever blessed God, whose presence is the happiness of every condition and whose favor makes sacred every relationship, we beseech you to be present and favorable unto these your servants, David and Mary, that they may truly be joined in the honorable estate of marriage in the covenant of their God. As you have brought them together by your providence, sanctify them by your spirit, giving them a new frame of heart fit for their new estate, and enrich them with all grace, whereby they may enjoy the comforts undergo the cares, endure the trials, and perform the duties of life together as becometh Christians, 
under your heavenly guidance and protection through our Lord Jesus Christ. David, will you have Mary to be your wife, to live together with her according to God's purpose for you in holy marriage? And will you pledge your faithfulness to her, to love her and comfort her, to honor and cherish her in all faith and tenderness, and forsaking all others, keep her only unto yourself, so long as you both shall live, will you? Mary, will you have David to be your husband, to live together with him according to God's purpose for you in holy marriage? And will you pledge your faithfulness to him, to love him, and to comfort him? to honor and to cherish him in all faith and tenderness and forsaking all others keep him only unto yourself so long as you both shall live with you who entrusts Mary to the loving care of David the mother of that Now you repeat after me, please. I, David, take you, Mary. I, David, take you, Mary. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. And I do promise and covenant. And I do promise and covenant. Before God and these witnesses. Before God and these witnesses. To be your loving and faithful husband. To be your loving and faithful husband. To have and to hold you. To have you and to hold you. From this day forward. From this day forward, in plenty and in want, in plenty and in want, in sickness and in health, in sickness and in health, in joy and in sorrow, in joy and in sorrow, to love you, to love you, and to cherish you, and to cherish you, according to God's holy purpose, according to God's holy purpose, so long as we both shall live, so long as we both shall live, and in this commitment. And in this commitment, I entrust you with my life. I entrust you with my life. And you will repeat after me. I, Mary, take you, David. I, Mary, take you, David. To be my beloved husband. To be my beloved husband. And I do promise and covenant. And I do promise and covenant. Before God and these witnesses. Before God and these witnesses. To be your loving and faithful wife. To, be your loving and to have, to have and, to you and to hold you from this day forward, from this day forward. In, plenty in plenty and in want, in sickness and in health, in, sickness and in, health. In, joy and in, in joy and in sorrow, to love you, to love you and, to and to cherish you according to God's holy purpose. So long as we both shall live, and in this commitment, I entrust you with my life. David, what token do you give in pledge that you will faithfully perform these vows? Mary? Mary? What token do you give in pledge that you will faithfully perform these vows? Now these rings are the fitting symbols of your irrevocably committed love and faith and are henceforth to be profoundly associated with this holy wedlock. And so these rings are bright as is the hope and anticipation that fills your whole vision of a life of love for one another and for the others that God gives to you, fills 
your mind and heart. The rings are precious, and so will be the delights and joys your married hearts will increasingly find together in the ever-deepening devotion of your home. And these rings are endless and enduring, and so is this everlasting joining together of yourselves that you do here this day. Mary, Mary, with this ring I take you to be my wife. With this ring I take you to be my wife. Promising to share with you my life. Promising to share with you my life. The responsibilities of our home. The responsibilities of our home. The fruits of our labor. The fruits of our labor. And our sorrows and our joys. And our sorrows and our joys. And building with you. And building with you. Through our love of God, through our love of God, a oneness of mind and spirit, a oneness of mind and spirit, which shall endure from now and forever, which shall endure from now and forever. As you place it on his finger, you repeat, David, mm -hmm. with this ring I take you to be my husband. With this ring I take you to be my husband. Promising to share with you my life. Promising to share with you my life. The responsibilities of our home. The responsibilities of our home. The fruits of our labor. The fruits of our labor. And our sorrows and our joys. And our sorrows and our joys. And building with you our love of God. And building with you our love of God. A oneness of mind and spirit. A oneness of mind and spirit. Which shall endure from now and forever. Which shall endure from now and forever. Now may these rings be the chaste and changeless symbols of your pure and ever-deepening devotion. For as much then as you, David, and you, Mary, have consented together in holy wedlock and have plighted each to the other your sacred trust in the name of God the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, I pronounce you now to be husband and wife, whom therefore God has joined together. Let no man divide. <clears throat> By this service, David, you and Mary have been saying the presence of God and these friends and loved ones. But you must continue to say to one another in your hearts, as long as you both shall live. Do not urge me to go back and desert you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. And I bid you to remember with the Apostle Paul, that love is patient and kind. This love is not jealous nor boastful. It is not arrogant nor rude. This love does not insist upon its own way. It is not irritable. It is not resentful. It does not rejoice in the wrong. This love rejoices in the right. And this love bears all things. It believes all things. It hopes all things. And it endures all things. There is nothing. This love cannot face. So faith and hope and love, these last forever, and the greatest of these is love. Put 
this love first. Let us all join together in prayer. O oh God of love, you have established marriage for the welfare and happiness of mankind. We ask your most gentle blessing, O oh God, upon all true lovers. We thank you for the longing that draws the soul of a man and a woman together and calls them to leave all the dear bonds of the past in order that they may cleave to one another. For the whole plan of it is yours, and only with you can we work it out with joy. Thus we pray this loving husband, David. Bless him as the provider of nourishment and raiment, and sustain him in all the pressures of his battle for bread. May his strength be her protection, and his character be her boast and her pride. And may he so live that she will find in him the haven for which the heart of a woman truly longs. Bless, we pray, this loving wife, Mary. Give her a tenderness that will make her great, and a deep sense of understanding and a great faith in you. Give her that inner beauty of soul that never fades, that eternal youth that is found in holding fast the things that never age. Strengthen them, we pray, in the understanding that marriage is not living merely for each other, but is two uniting and joining hands to serve you. Bless their great spiritual purpose in life. May they seek first your kingdom and your righteousness, so that all the other good things you want to give them can be added unto them. May they not expect that perfection of each other that belongs alone to you. Help them to minimize each other's weaknesses. and Be swift to praise and magnify each other's strength and see each other through a lover's kind and patient eyes. Now make such assignments to them on the scroll of your will, we pray, as will bless them and develop their characters as they walk together. Give them enough tears to keep them tender, enough hurts to keep them humane, enough of failure to keep their hands clenched tightly in yours, and enough of success to make them sure that they walk with you. No oh God, may they never take each other's love for granted, but always experience that breathless wonder that exclaims, out of all this world, you have chosen me. And when life is done, and the sun is setting, may they be found then as now still hand in hand, still thanking God for each other. May they serve you happily, faithfully, together, until at last one shall lay the other into the arms of God. This we ask through Jesus Christ, the great lover of our souls who taught us all when gathered together to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our sinners. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we have shared in these luminous moments 
of long and deepening memory that shall be shared. Let us stand together as we sing the shepherd's song, again, our prayer of assurance and celebration for that walk in the company of God, which David and Mary begin in a different sense together today. Page number 90, hat 7, <clears throat> the shepherd's song, let us stand to sing. Let us pray. Glory be to him who can keep you from falling and bring you safe to his glorious presence, innocent and happy. To God, the only God, who saves us through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be the glory, majesty, authority, and power which he had before time began, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat>